I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. I believe that since Roe v. Wade has been the law for 20 years, that we should sustain and support it. And I sustain and support that law and the right of a woman to I make that choice. preserve and protect a woman's right to choose and have devoted and dedicated to honoring my word in that regard. What's your position on abortion? I am pro-life. Experiences. I think I mean, the, the people who really have a life-changing experience uh, in a way that's really incomparable are those that serve in our military. I see some veterans here. I, my guess is, what was your experience like? When did you go to the military? I went in the military in 1968. During Vietnam. What, tell, tell, what kind of impact did that have on your in life? In 1968, enormous impact. I was a social work officer. And I, guess I saw some casualties uh, in my office. I remember one man, I had to look him in the eye because I couldn't look him in the face. He was so disfigured. I, remembered, uh, I remember a helicopter pilot whose legs, the doctors did everything they could to save. In the end, he lost his legs. I remember not opening a door for an amputee because they had to learn to do for themselves. It takes a military man to really uh, dislike war. We're not war mongers. Uh, Talk about the understanding of the military, and let's go to you, Speaker Gingrich. Recently, uh, Dr. Paul referred to you as a chicken hawk because you didn't serve, given what you just heard Governor Perry say about uh, understanding the military and Dr. Paul's comments, how do well, you, you respond? Know, well, Dr. Paul makes a lot of comments. It's part of his style. My father served 27 years in the Army in World War II, Korea and Vietnam. I grew up in a military family moving around the world. Since 1979, I've spent 32 years working, starting with the Army's Training and Doctrine Command. I was the longest serving teacher in the senior military for 23 years. I served in the Defense Policy Board. But let me say something about veterans, because as an Army brat whose family was deeply engaged, I feel for veterans. We had a great meeting today in Wolfboro with veterans. And I made a commitment in New Hampshire that we would reopen the hospital in Manchester. We would develop a new clinic in the North Country using telecommunications. And we would provide a system where veterans could go to their local doctor or their local hospital. The idea that a veteran in the North Country in midwinter has to go all the way to Boston is absolutely, totally, fundamentally wrong. And I would say as an Army brat who watched his mother, his sisters, and his father for 27 years, I have a pretty good sense of what military families and veterans' families need. Congressman Paul, would you say that again? Would you, would you use that phrase again? Yeah, I, I think people who don't serve when they could and they get uh, th three or four or even five deferments uh, aren't in, in, they they have no right to send our kids off to war and and not be even against the wars that we have i'm trying to stop the wars but at least you know i went when they called me up but you know the the veterans the veterans problem is a big one we have hundreds of thousands coming back from these wars that were undeclared they were unnecessary they haven't been won they're unwinnable we have hundreds of thousands looking for care and we have a s epidemic of suicide coming back and so many have I mean, if you add up all the contractors and all the wars going on in Afghanistan and in Iraq, we've lost 8,500 Americans and severe injuries, over 40,000. And these are undeclared war. So Rick keeps saying, we, you don't want this libertarian stuff. But what I'm talking about, I don't bring up the word, you do, but I talk about the Constitution. The Constitution has rules, and I don't like it when we send our kids off to fight these wars, and when those individuals didn't go themselves, and then come up and when they're asked, they say, oh, I don't think I could, one person could have made a difference. I have a pet peeve that annoys me to a great deal, because when I see these young men coming back, my heart weeps for them. Speaker Gingrich. Well, Dr. Paul has a long history of saying things that are inaccurate and false. The fact is, I never asked for deferment. I was married with a child. It was never a question. My father was, in fact, serving in Vietnam in the Mekong Delta at the time he's referring to. I think I have a pretty good idea of what it's like as a family to worry about your father getting killed, and I personally resent the kind of comments and aspersions he routinely makes without accurate information and then just slurs people with. I need one quick follow-up. When I was drafting, I was married and had two kids, and I went. I wasn't eligible for the draft. I wasn't eligible for the draft.
economy seemingly on the brink of collapse. High unemployment sticking around. New foreclosures jumped 20 percent. All out from the debt crisis. Seven million jobs lost. The nation's debt keeps surging. Change has come to America. The concept of TARP, I was willing to go along with it. I think there is need for economic stimulus. I signed a letter with uh, Democrat. Act. Where are the people that say all of this stuff is socialism? Government's too big. The role of government ought to be for the protection of liberty, not for the intrusion in economic affairs. We've spent too much, we tax too much, we borrow too much. It's bankrupting this country. I've been talking about these problems for a long, long time. Now we're bankrupt and we have to decide which way we're going to go. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message.